Right, so here I have a robot ready to go. What we're going to do is we're going to walk through all of the activities just to make sure that they all work. The first thing I'm going to do is start off on basically the CRUD activities. You can see in this case, I've actually taken a application scope. I've dragged it onto my design canvas and I've set up the authentication information as well as the endpoint URL. What we're going to be doing in this case is I'm going to show you the get service now records activity to make sure it works. We're just going to get a list of all the incidents. I'm then going to insert an incident. I'm going to update it, get it back just to make sure that we, uh, we can see that it's been changed and then we'll delete it. So we should be able to see that the numbers are different. So the get service now records, you just go into configure. In this case, it's going to ask me for my password because that's what we do for the design time information. And I have an incident. And in this case, I can actually put in any kind of query I want. So for instance, I can actually, and these are documented in ServiceNow. So I can paste in a query that looks like this, where I just want a couple of fields. And then I just want to have one record. And let's say I want to see where the short descriptions like network. I can test it and there I go. But I, let's assume I wanted to see all the records. I can take this out. And this is great for an RPA developer who's learning this and just wants to test everything. And now you can say I have all the records. In this case, I just want to be able to get uh, everything that's actually in the system. So I can do something as simple as this, which will get me all the incidents in there. And now that's done. For the short description, I'm going to actually just set it with a date timestamp saying I'm a short description. And when I get the ServiceNow records, I'm just going to show you the total number of rows because it puts out a data table as the output argument. So what I'm going to assert, this is very similar to how we do it in Salesforce. Basically, it has a configuration dialog. You can choose the object that you want to do the insert against. The new value I'm going to put to a, a, a new variable. And then also I want to capture uh, the items that I want to put in as input parameters in local variables. Now, if I wasn't sure about the stuff I wanted to insert, like maybe I wanted to put in something interesting and I didn't know if this is going to work, I can actually test this and it'll actually give me a new system ID and I can actually go to the list of incidents. And you can see I've now created a new incident. So this is a great way of design time for you to actually test your queries. Um, if I wanted to get additional parameters for this object, I can just go on add multiple fields and actually look for the properties that I want and add those in. The other thing you can do on this as well is each one of these activities, the insert, update, uh, and the get, have something called additional fields, which is a data row. So let's assume that I get my data from an external source. Maybe I'm getting it from NetSuite or I'm getting it from Jira or I'm getting it from some other external system and I have a lot of columns and I don't wanna to have to go through and map these out individually from my data row. I can actually set the data row as an input parameter. And what will happen then is we'll look at the column headers. And if we find a column header that actually matches or a column name that matches, one of these fields will auto map that for you. So in this case, all you really have to do that is you don't need to do any of these things like I did as local variables. You can simply make a, a data row, add that in, and then for the, for the primary key that you want back out, you just make a quick variable for it. And that's just all I'm doing right there. And then I'll actually just get that incident ID just to make sure it works. I'm going to actually then make a new short description. In this case, you can see it says, I am an updated short description, and there's going to be a slightly different timestamp on that. And then for the update, it works the same way. I can actually, uh, if I have a lot of stuff I want to update, it has the same additional fields. I can configure the um, primary key for that. In this case, I'm actually going to put in some parameters. If you have both an additional fields parameter as well as uh, parameter set in the design time, these will override. So and if you want to actually see um, what some sample data looks like, all of these, just like Salesforce, have the ability you can put in a primary key and run this, and it'll actually get the sample data. This way, uh, for instance, sometimes you may not know what the data is supposed to look like, and then you can retrieve a sample record and take a look with that. 
And then I'm going to actually uh, get the actual same ServiceNow record. I want to get it back out to make sure that my update has worked. And there's the incident ID and the short description, which I'll get back. And then I'm going to show that in a message box. I'm going to show them by side by side. And then we'll look at the total number of records. And it actually should increment from what we first saw. And then right before I delete it, um, I'll show you that information. Then we can see that um, the delete has actually worked as well. So let's run through this. So right now it says I have 131 incidents in the system. And this is the sys ID for the item that I just inserted. And then what you can see here is actually not only is the original short description I put in there, you can see the updated came back out exactly as I said it would, and also that the timestamp is different. If I actually look in the system, there's 81, and I say I want to look at all my incidents. There's 82, and there is 1008. So we've actually seen that the insert worked, and then the update worked. And I can say OK to that. Now you can see I now have 132, so that's changed. And if I refresh this, this incident should be gone because I've tested the delete. And yes, it's gone. So you can see that uh, this is very powerful. It allows you to go to absolutely any object that's inside ServiceNow. So there's quite a lot of them. So this should extend out the functionality quite a bit. Attachments is also another area that we uh, put in the initial release. In this case, I actually want to get, uh, let's put our password in, and I'll tell you exactly what I'm going to do. In this case, I want to get a very specific record. I want to get incidents number uh, 10060. I can test it, so it's there in the system. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add an attachment. Now, in this case, you can see in my in folder, I actually have a, a demo invoice that I want to upload. There's nothing in the out folder. And for incident 1006, right now there's no attachment. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually add the attachment into it. We're going to download it onto my local hard drive in a different folder. And then I'm going to just double check that it's all there. And then I'm going to delete it and prove that that works. So let's run this. OK, it says that it's processed. Let's take a look. And there in the out folder, there's my attachment. And if I move this over here, we can see that now the attachment is there. And if I let the robot finish and I refresh, the attachment is gone. So that worked out nicely. Another new feature is import sets. Import sets are a way to do ETL jobs in a managed fashion. So right now, it could be that your uh, ServiceNow system administrator doesn't want you touching the actual underlying records directly. He wants to go through an import set. So an import set is almost like an updatable view. Um, they, you can go into ServiceNow, describing them in details beyond the scope of my demo. We can just say that um, here are some import sets in here. And I've already created one. Um, what you can do in going in is I can actually just double check the number of records, the number of instances I have. I don't have any filter on this whatsoever. I just basically have, I just want to know for my import set, I just want to know the total number of records. And that's what this is. I've decided I'm going to go um, get this import set. And that's the name of my import set. And then I'm going to actually just create some, some basic records in a data table. In this case, I'm going to have three. So I know what my count is before. I'm going to add three. I'm actually going to insert multiple records. This is part of that bulk API. And I can go in and I can say I want my needed import set. And this is the data table that I created there. And I'm just going to insert those records. This is, again, just a sample. And then I'm going to get the same records back. And I should actually have three more than what my first one was. And let's see that work. So 
So initially it says I have seven records in there. It's now gone in and my second update is gone in and I should have 10. So now I have 10 records that have been put in through the import set. And you can see that um, the import set is running. So it's still going. And there are the three records that are imported through the import set. One, two, three. Because that's what that import set did. I actually have it just mapping over the incident table. So that is working. It's a pretty cool feature. And also import sets are best practice. We've documented this extensively on our um, end documentation. So please go through and read that. And then the last one I also want to show you is bulk update. So like upserting records. So I'm going to do something a little bit differently. Rather than creating a data table um, in memory, I'm actually going to get a list of incidents from Excel. So in this case, I have my, uh, my incidents. And what I'm going to do, what it does is, if there's no sys ID here that I supply, it's actually going to consider it an insert. And if there is a sys ID, it'll consider it an update. And then for output, just to prove that it actually works. What I'm going to do is this is going to actually load in the, um, the data that I want to import for a bulk update. It's actually going to run through the, the bulk update. This basically just takes the um, object and then also the data table that I want to work through. And then as I mentioned, uh, also it has an output parameter. So the output is also a data table. So I can actually see both and compare the two and also capture any results or um, any errors that I have, and then just a message box that, hey, we ran OK. So it's just going to run. And what you'll see is for the uh, for the two records that I did not have a system ID, it actually now has created those. And those are inserts, and that's the status code. And in this case, uh, I have the update, and the update will show a 200, and that is the same the same sys ID. And what we can then do is go back to our list of incidents and we should see them added and updated. So here are the two that we just added in, 8.6 and 8.7. And there's the bulk update three. <laughs> That's one I just had there and we can see that it updated. So I've actually shown that we can do upserts uh, just in one operation. There's no need to loop through a data table and break these out. Um, That's just baked into the product right now. That's all I have, so please feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions whatsoever. We'd love to hear back from you. Thanks very much.